Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Fun with Licky. Today, we're going to um, study the chapter of history. So, I have my mind maps here for my study of histories and all. So, I'm going to share with you all and today we're going to learn about the Magadhan Empire. Before that, we have to learn about the rise of kingdoms and republics. So, in the rise of kingdoms and republic, started in the 600 BCE, in that time, iron was started being used extensively. Um, almost uh, the Ganges plain in India was cleared of forests and people who started to settle down in the territories called Janapadas. Janapadas means the place where people place their food or ancient territorial states. Uh, the Janapadas were named after the ruling clan of each area and they were of two types, monarchies and republics. So there were 16 Janapadas. Um, the 16 Janapadas were... 16 Janapadas were Gandhara, Kamboja, Asmaka, Vasta, Avanti, Sursena, Chedi, Malla, Kuru, Panchala, Matsya, Vajji, Anga, Kashi, Koshala, and Magadha. And they were the four main Janapadas who were the powerfulest. The four main Janapadas were called the Maha Janapadas, who are Magadha, Koshala, Avanti, and Vatsa. So Avanti is in the central Malva and it adjoins the areas and the adjoining areas lay the state of Avantis. So, um, Avanti was divided into two parts. The southern region, uh, it was divided into two parts, northern and southern. The southern region's capital was Ujjain and the northern's was the Mahashmati. You will know what is Mahashmati if you have watched the movie Bahubali. They were the important towns. Avanti was one of the chief rivals of Magadha. And it was also a very powerful kingdom. And next, we'll talk about Koshala. It was bounded in the west by the river Gomati and south by Sarpika or Syandika or Sai. And in the east, Sadinara, Gandak or Gandak. And on the north, by the Nepal hills, Ayodhya, Shravasti, Saket were the three important cities of Koshala. Uh, Koshala also included the tribal republican territory of Shakyas or of Kapilavastu, the birthplace of Buddha. And let's talk about Vatsa. Um, Magadha was the mightiest. So we'll speak about it at the last because history is large. So coming back to Vatsa, the Vatsa capital laid 40 miles from Allahabad at Koshindi. The Vatsas were a Kuru clan who had shifted from Hastinapur and settled down at Koshindi. Koshindi was located near the confluence of the Ganga and the Yamuna it had a strong fortified capital. Now, for the mightiest and powerfulest, Magadha. The Magadhan Empire lay between the Anga and the Vatsa. Anga was also a Janapada. Uh, the corresponding 
to the regions around Patna and Gaya districts. Gaya or Gaya districts? It was bounded on the north and west by the rivers Ganga and Son, and on the south by the Vindhyas, and on the east by the river Champa. The earliest capital of Magadha was at Rajgir, which was also called as Girivraja. It was surrounded by five hills. This made Rajgir impregnable. Impregnable means strong and impossible to conquer. But these Mahajanapadas were always engaged in fighting among themselves because they wanted to extend their territorial boundaries. The political history of India from 60th century BCE onwards is the history of struggles among these Janapadas for supremacy. Eventually, the kingdom of Magadha emerged as the powerful and the mightiest. You might be thinking, what is the cause of Magadha's success? Its capital was called Rajgir, Rajagriha or Girivraja. So, the fa there are many factors. Um, so, uh, the main factors are the presence of natural source helped them to rise to power. The rich iron deposits, iron ore deposits contributed in making effective iron tools and agricultural tools. Due to the strategic locations of both the capitals, Rajagriha and Pataliputra, it was difficult for any rival to capture these cities. The Magadha rulers had well organized, efficient and powerful armies which consisted of elephants, Elephants, horses, and chariots. The Magadan territory, being fertile, produced surplus food, generating large revenues for the kingdom. The Magadan rulers gained immensely from trade and commerce. And the rivers like Ganga and Son, which I had discussed before, provided them waterways. The strong rulers constantly extended the size of the empire. Some of these rulers were Bimbisara, Ajata Shatru, and Mahapadmananda. Whereas Mahapadmananda was of a different dynasty who invaded Magadha but still kept the same name as Magadha. So the first ever king was Bimbisara the first ever king of Magadhan Empire. And he had his own strategies to extend his territories, which were friendship, conquest, and marriage. So let's discuss more about marriage. So he married the princess of Koshala and he received Kashi, Kashi province as dowry. He married a Lichave princess of Vaishali and made friends with them. And his third wife was the daughter of the chieftain of Punjab. He ascended his throne in 542 BCE, which means he got his throne in 542 BCE. He died sadly in 493 BCE. He was killed by his son, Ajata Shatru. Ajata Shatru killed his father, Bimbisara, to become the ruler of Magadha. He also attacked his maternal uncle's kingdom. Sorry, guys, there's a mistake over here. His maternal uncle's kingdom, which was Koshala. 
He attacked his uncle's kingdom for 16 years. 16 times, which means once a year, he attacked his uncle's kingdom. In his time, the Magadhan Empire expanded and extended its frontiers to Kashi and Vaishali. Avanti and Magadh at Ajatashatru's time were strong rivals. Sadly, even Ajatashatru died in 461 BCE. Ajata Shatru means no enemies. So let's also talk about Nanda dynasty and Alexander's invasion. Um, for the decline of the Magadhan Empire, which was which was which had to be continued by Ajata Shatru's successors. The decline of that empire, it's not decline but loss, was the reason was his successes were very weak in controlling the empire. That's why the Nanda dynasty could invade the Magadhan Empire, which was the mightiest. But still, the Nanda dynasty did not change the name to Nanda dynasty, still kept it as Magadha only. So, um, Mahapadmananda was the first king of Magad Nanda dynasty, basically Magadha, in the Nanda period. He was the founder of Nanda dynasty. He took over Magadha in about 360 BC. He was the first king of Nanda dynasty. And... The last king of Nanda dynasty was Dhananda. He was very cruel. Hence, he was extremely unpopular to his subjects. And he was overthrown by Chandragupta Maurya, who found the Mauryan Empire. We will be talking about the Mauryan Empire in another video. So, after that, simultaneously in the north, Alexander's invasion occurred. Alexander was one of the most powerful and ambitious men in the history of the world. He ruled Macedonia or Macedonia in 336 BCE. He set forth to become the emperor of the world, whole world. Thus, he conquered Syria, Persia, Asia Minor, and Egypt. He invaded India in 326 BCE. He received a very stiff resistance from the ruler, Porus, who ruled the area between the rivers Jhelum and Chenab. But he was defeated by Alexander. Alexander was impressed by his behavior. Behavior and bravery, even if Alexander had a huge, vast army. So for his bravery, Alexander gave back the kingdom to Porus and set them free for his courage and bravery. So after this, Alexander again uh, wanted to continue with his ambition to conquer the world. But his soldiers were very, very... And due to the prolonged fights, they were longing to go home. They refused to fight against the powerful kingdom of Magadha, neither confront them. So Alexander had no choice but to go back home. Before he went back home, he divided his territories into three generals or parts. So there were many effects of Alexander's invasion, which was there were four new land and sea routes discovered, trade relations between Europe and India uh, increased uh, or developed. An effect of Alexander's invasion, his historians left dated records of his campaigns. And the cultural contact with the Greeks led to the growth of two Indo-school Greek 
Indo Greek schools of art known as Gandhara School of Art and Mathura School of Art. So that's all for today, guys. Hope you learned a new lesson in history. I will be uploading more videos like this. You can check this out for your exams. So thanks for supporting me this much. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. See you in my next video.